Okay, um, so next up, we're gonna have a, um, a wonderful uh, DAP founder up on stage. Um, the DAP is called Uniswap. Some of you may have heard of it. It's a pretty awesome uh, and very unique use of Ethereum. So let's welcome to the stage Hayden Adams. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me make sure I know how this works. All right, hello. My name is Hayden Adams. I created a project called Uniswap. It's a uh, decentralized exchange protocol built on top of Ethereum. All right, so the core idea of Uniswap is to make it as easy as possible to swap between Ether and ERC-20 tokens. It allows uh, liquidity providers to pool liquidity and on-chain liquidity reserves, um, and then it automates the pricing. Uh, users can now swap back and forth between Ether and ERC-20 tokens. Um, you can also go in between any ERC-20 pair by going ERC-20 to ETH, ETH to another ERC-20, and then back to the buyer. Um, because the pricing is fully automated and it's all using a smart contract, uh, you have no other counterparties, so you don't need to have some sort of order book. It completely removes the idea. Um, and liquidity providers can be profitable by uh, slowly generating fees you know, over a long period of time. And right now, liquidity providers on Uniswap, a lot of them are making between 5 and 15% profits. Um, okay, so when I first started working on Uniswap, um, the main deck, this was uh, you know, midway through 2017, or fall 2017, um, the main DEX at that time was Ether Delta. And Ether Delta was a big step up from centralized exchanges because it removed, uh, because it was non-custodial. So the uh, founder of Ether Delta, he never had any ability to, uh, you know, steal your funds, um, as opposed to, you know, keeping money in banks or on Coinbase or whatever. Um, uh, the other thing, you know, there were some issues such as, can I go back? Okay, cool. Um, so it was, it was pretty nice, um, but you know, it didn't quite hit all the properties. For one, it was a little bit of a difficult UX to use. Um, so you know, compared to Uniswap, which is really simple and clean. Um, but it also had this, pro it didn't really hit all the uh, core properties of Ethereum that at that time I was really interested in. So what I liked about Ethereum in 2017 was that it was decentralized. Um, so you know, no one had the ability to take your funds. Um, it was censorship resistant. Uh, so, you know, if it's impossible to really shut down, um, you'd have to basically shut down every single Ethereum node. Um, and it allows you to engage in uh, complex financial transactions without needing to trust your counterparties. Um, so, you know, you can, you know, these were like multi-sigs or all sorts of things. Um, but, you know, a lot of the uh, projects built on top of Ethereum in 2017, I noticed they didn't really have all of these key properties. You know, they might have, have had some of them, like decentralization or trusted execution, um, but for the most part, they had you know, admin private keys, they could be shut down. Um, you know, Ether Delta had an off-chain order book, uh, controlled listing of tokens, um, listing fees, stuff like that. Um, so Ethereum is cool because of decentralization, censorship resistance, and trustless execution. Uh, Uniswap is cool because of decentralization, censorship resistance, trustless execution. Um, okay, it's a pop quiz. Uh, if you build a centralized app on a decentralized platform, you get A, the benefits of both, B, the benefits of neither, C, Bancor, or D, both B and C. Uh, feel free to just shout your answers out. No, I'm joking, don't. Um, no, but really, uh, if you build a centralized app on top of a decentralized platform, the answer is B, you get the benefits of neither. Um, you can't, you know, you, you get all of the uh, decentralization and censorship resistance of Coinbase and you get all of the scaling of Ethereum. Uh, so I think that you, know, you probably want to make sure that the applications you build on top of Ethereum are mimicking the underlying properties. Um, so other reasons I kind of like Uniswap and some of the properties I like about it are uh, that it, highly is very, it incentivizes liquidity. It makes it incredibly easy to lock up your liquidity into one of these pools. Um, you don't need to be a sophisticated market maker. So normally when you're working in a uh, on like a DEX with an order book or you know, a centralized exchange with an order book. You have to be running these you know, bots. You have to have a lot of liquidity. You can't really pool across multiple people because they would need to trust each other. Um, Uniswap, you know, it's just really easy. You just throw it in uh, and over time it can generate fees. Um, it's incredibly easy to integrate. This is because it's fully on chain and the pricing is fully automated. Um, one example of a, of a cool integration was Kyber. 
uh, where you know, if you make a swap on Kyber now, they, they check the price on Uniswap, they check the price in their own reserves, and then they just execute it over whichever one is cheaper. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, another thing I like is it, I kept it really simple. Um, and it, good UX and uh, great memes. So here are some examples. Um, meme one, this one. This one is good. This is one of my favorites, I don't know why. Um, this one is a good one. Anyway, uh, so, so I launched Uniswap in uh, November, at, Dev, at DevCon 4 in November uh, 2018. Yeah. Um, since then, you know, I was kind of expecting to get a little bit of slower growth than it did. Um, as of now, it has about $10 million in the liquidity pools. Uh, $9 million were traded last week, uh, so about $1.2 million per day. Um, 300,000 ETH has been traded uh, since November, and there are about 250 different exchanges, uh, or 250 different tokens um, listed. Uh, and part of the reason is it you know, allows anyone to create these pools, anyone to join them, anyone to trade, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. There's nothing any of you guys can do to stop it. There's nothing any government can do to stop it. It's, you know, it's very decentralized. Um, yeah, this is a little bit of the growth of the liquidity pool. Uh, still going up. Um, so, you know, you might think that $10 million, it all came from a few people, but this is the uh, distribution of the DAI liquidity pool. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the, uh, the cyan, uh, turquoise one, or whatever you want to call that color, um, is actually other. So about 25% of the uh, DAI liquidity pool, which has $2 million in it, uh, has less than 1%, uh, or, you know, 25% of the pool comes from people who put in less than 1%. Uh, the largest single liquidity provider is 14% of the pool. Um, so it's you know, very well distributed. So this is the distribution of liquidity. This is the distribution of risk. This is the distribution of rewards. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. I think that you know, uh, rewarding people based off the risk they take, the, uh, the amount they contribute, um, is you know, pretty reasonable. Um, I think that a lot of projects have built in you know, disproportionate reward systems, where people who don't take on very much risk reap a huge percentage of the rewards. Um, Oh, am I missing? I feel like some stuff are missing. Let me see. Let me go back. Can I go back? Mm. One sec. <laughs> anyway, nope. Okay. Um, well, that's fine. Maybe it's not fine. I would prefer I could go back. Nope. All right. Huh? Okay. Cool. I'll just chill. I'm not going to rap like this morning. I can, but I choose not to. I, um, so. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, let me, so there were a few slides missing somehow, not sure why, but that's fine, I'll talk about some of the others. All right, cool. All right, cool. So one of the cool things I like about Uniswap is it's, you know, as I mentioned, it's incredibly easy to integrate. Um, I tried to design it as a very low-level protocol, um, so you know any anything can kind of plug in. Um, and one example of a kind of complex uh, integration you could do would be someone could lock up their liquidity in Uniswap. They would get a liquidity token that represented their ownership of that pool. They could collateralize that in MakerDAO or Compound or Dharma, uh, take out a loan against it. Um, they could either use that to increase the collateral on their loan. They could, uh, you know, lock it in a uh, uh, validator pool, uh, proof of stake um, system, and start generating fees on that. So now they're generating fees while they're generating fees. So that's nice. Um, so kind of, this is the example of the sort of more like power of Ethereum that excites me, and sort of the types of things that I'm hoping are going to be built on top of it. Um, you know, who are the users of Uniswap? To me, it's uh, you know everyone. Um, I think that um, you know. For, for one, it's dApps and apps. I think that you know, having the ability for an application to take a fee or, or to be paid in any token and to be able to on the fly convert it to whatever token it wants is, is very powerful. Um, I think that centralized exchanges could use it as a source of liquidity. I think that wallets can use it as a source of liquidity. I think you know, traders, arbitragers, uh, random people. Um, hopefully, it can uh, enable more, type, more different people to, you know, uh, be a part of the uh, global financial system. So, you know, because, there's, uh, because it's built on top of Ethereum, because there's no walled gardens, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty excited. Anyway, that's 
most of what I have.